Liner produced almost 20 different models of the END and W2 switcher between 1949 and 1969. The original was produced between 1939 and 49 by the General Motors Electromotive Division and thus the Lionel model appeared at the end of the original's production period. The original switcher had a 12-cylinder, 1,000-horsepower diesel engine. More than 50 railroad companies purchased more than 1,100 NW2 switches. In this video, you see one of these original engines still in operation with permission from Central Penn Rail Productions. In the O27 version, the 6220, which I will show you later, were the first NW2 switches. In the 1949 catalogue, it was led at Lionel, but it was always produced with the AT and SF markings for the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railway. It was loaded with features, more than mo many models which followed later, such as handrails, radio antenna or horn. The 622 and 6220 were the first locos equipped with magnet traction to increase grip. In 1949, the axles were magnetized. From 1950 on, magnets were mounted into the track frame casting. The magnetism keeps a screwdriver attached to a wheel. In the 1950 catalog, it was also wrongly labeled as New York Central. It had operating couplers at front and end, lights, and a three-position E-unit. Only these models had a mechanically operating ringing bell, which you can hear during operation. This model was almost identical to the 622, but lacked the ringing bell. The Edgerton, Topeka and Santa Fe Railway purchased 15 NW2 switches. This company was founded in 1859 and was one of the larger railways in the US. Produced in the same three years as the 623, the 624 Chesapeake and Ohio was a very colorful model. It had all the features of the 623 model. The Chesapeake and Ohio Railway purchased 41 units and was thus one of the best customers for General Electric NW2 switches.
seaboard switcher had also all the features of the early models. The main line of Seaboard Airline Railroad ran from Richmond, Virginia to Jacksonville, Florida, bringing travelers to the Sunshine State. Seaboard rails continued to Tampa, St. Petersburg, West Palm Beach and Miami. They purchased seven SW2 switches. With the 600 model, Linus started to save costs. He did not have an operating headlight, and according to the Linus service manual, only few had two axle, the majority only single axle macro traction. It also lacked the fuel tank of the previous models, which were placed between the wheels. The Monsieur of Kansas Texas Railroad bought five units. The Erie NW2 switcher was similarly equipped as a 600 model, thus lacking some of the previous features. The Erie Railroad operated in the northeastern United States, originally connecting New York City, more specifically Jersey City, with Lake Erie. 27 units were owned by that company. This model had no headlight but operating couplers. It features a remote controlled horn which could be activated by DC voltage like a whistle. With this model, Liner introduced simulated fuel tanks, simpler as in the early models. Distinct to the 621, the 611 Jersey Central had a two tone color scheme, had a light but non-operating plastic couplers. You will see a train pulled by 2621 and 1611. The Central Railroad of New Jersey purchased only two units of the original NW2. Seaboard Airline returned after its premiere in 1954, two years later, with the 601 model and in 57 to 58 with the 602 model as an 027 variant. In contrast to the 601, the 602 had a headlight but non operating couplers. Here I only show the 602.
1958 Union Pacific Switcher was unique in that it was decorated on one side with the slogan Serves All the West, on the other side with Root of the Streamliners. With 95 units, Union Pacific had the largest fleet of NW2s. The 614 was the most unusual looking model of the NW2 switches. It had a yellow simulated dynamic brake housing and large torpedo tube air reservoirs on top of the hood. It featured the Alaska Railroad Eskimo logo. It was the first model with a cheap two position E unit which I will introduce later. In 1961, the center-fit NW2 switcher came back after a break of seven years and appeared in four variants until 1966. The 616 was a well-equipped version with magnet traction, three-position E-unit and even a horn. It was, however, not as solid as the early models, reflected in a weight of two pounds worth of three pounds of the 622 from 1949. With this model, Lionel further reduced costs and quality. It sold for 1295 and thus less than half as the 616, which was offered in the same year for 2750. It had no magnet traction, only two position E unit and a much simpler drive chain. The two position E unit directly switched direction without a neutral position so that the engine could reverse in full speed when the voltage dropped by a bad contact. Bad news. You will now see the 616 and 633 at the end of the train.
616 was replaced by the 617 in 1963. While the 616 had no trim, the 617 was delivered with horn, bell and radio antenna. Unfortunately, my model has lost bell and antenna. This model was again a cheap version, similar as the 633. Here I show the simplified drive chain in comparison to the 617, which drives only one axle. While the set with the 617 sold for $49.95, this set sold only for half price, namely $25. The 617 and 634 are at the front of the train. The end catalogue 635 and the catalogue 645 were the last NW2 switches. The 645, shown here, was a very simple version with no trim, a two position E unit, and a simple drive chain. It was one of the only four locos offered in 1969, the end of the classical Lionel period.